I'm here today to give you an update on the current state of COVID-19 and the vaccines. Uh, this is meant to be just a, a quick update and um, help everyone sort of answer some questions that may be running through your head. Um, again, we're in some trying times because we're seeing the rates go up, yet we're all trying to get back to a normal state um, and trying to learn to live uh, with COVID-19, especially with the kids back in school and more and more people back um, at work. So I think what you might be asking yourself is, what is your new normal? How can you still stay safe, but do all the things that you need to do? Um, and how do we keep uh, all our loved ones safe? So if those are the questions you're asking, um, you know, some of the, the key things haven't changed. So that's the good news. <laughs> so some things with COVID-19 haven't changed. It's still important to wear a mask, for example, in a crowded indoor setting, no matter what your vaccination status is, um, and try to avoid those crowded indoor settings. Um, it's those simple things that can really go a long way. Doing things outside, doing things in well-ventilated settings can really prevent the spread and help all of us down the road. Um, the other thing is, uh, the key thing is um, social distancing uh, when possible, staying uh, six feet away from folks and washing your hands. So those three things really haven't changed much uh, through the course of the pandemic um, and still remain as important today as they were in 2020. Um, the big thing that's changed, as you all know, is the vaccines. They remain our most powerful tool uh, against the pandemic, even with the Delta variant. Um, yes, we're seeing more vaccine breakthrough, but that breakthrough is generally very mild. And so the key is the vaccines prevent severe disease and hospitalizations and um, really are the key to keeping all of us safer. So if you haven't gotten your vaccine, please do seek out um, the earliest opportunity to get it. They're widely available. Uh, we certainly have them widely available within Kaiser Permanente at just about every medical center on any day of the week. Um, so talk to your doctor. If you still have any questions um, that are lingering, uh, please talk to your doctor and, and get the answers because we have more answers than we did when we rolled out the vaccines. We have robust data and millions of people around the world have gotten these vaccines now and um, there's really been no serious uh, side effects um, except for a very mi m uh, minority group of people who, who've had some side effects. Um, most side effects are limited and minimal and get better within a few days and those are expected and that just shows us that your immune system is working. So in talking about vaccines today, um, I'm sure one of the questions that you have is about additional doses or third doses and boosters and is there a difference and who should get it and when. And so you um, probably know that a couple of weeks ago, the FDA and the CDC's uh, ASIP, which is an organization that governs all immunization practices in the US, approved third doses for patients who had received either Pfizer or Moderna um, and only for those with qualifying immunocompromising conditions, such as HIV, um, cancer on chemotherapy, uh, transplant recipients, and other people are receiving immunocompromising medications. Um, and the reason for that is um, those, that group of uh, patients was believed to not have developed an adequate immune response to the first series of vaccines because their immune system is not working normally. They weren't able to develop that robust immune response to keep them protected against COVID and especially against the Delta variant. So um, that's why those uh, third doses for those patients came faster because we needed to do that quickly. There are the most vulnerable group of patients in general. Um, and so um, it was important to get them better protection as quickly as possible. As far as boosters for everyone else, there is a difference between an additional dose for an immunocompromised patient and a booster. And the difference is a booster is for someone who actually had an adequate immune response from the first series. So we're not worried that their immune system didn't function correctly and didn't actually respond to the vaccine. But what we're concerned is about is that over time that immunity might have waned. And that's where 
we're uh, waiting for the FDA and ASIP to review the data on when is the right time to give a booster dose. And timing is critical with a booster dose because if you give it too soon, you actually might not get the optimal boosting effect from the immune system and the longer term protection. So the key is we all want longer term protection against this virus since it's not quite going away and we're gonna see other variants. So that's why the FDA and the ACIP are rigorously looking at all the data for the different vaccines, Pfizer, Moderna, J&J, &J, and deciding what is the optimal timing of giving boosters for people who are not immunocompromised, um, and what should that dose be, and all of those factors are being considered. Um, the FDA is going to be meeting in a couple of weeks around September 17th, followed by that. Um, ASIP will meet, they will review all of the um, current data and develop guidelines for healthcare organizations like us. And then after that, we'll begin giving boosters probably toward the end of the month or in October to certain populations. Um, and again, we might, might actually prioritize higher risk populations uh, like those over 65 because it makes most sense to do so. Um, so all of that is coming and we'll have more information soon. In the meantime, something you can do immediately is go get your flu shot. So flu shots have become widely available as of last week and we're just starting to enter flu season. We expect that we'll probably have um, um, a more uh, rigorous flu season than we did last year because schools are open. Um, and kids um, definitely help transmit flu, unfortunately. So um, get your flu shot. If you skipped it last year, this is definitely not the year to skip it. Um, I know last year we talked about a possible twindemic, but I think um, that's what we might see this year, uh, more likely with uh, everything more open, not just schools, but the rest of society is a lot more open. Um, and unfortunately, there is less masking even in, in crowded indoor settings, so we, we may see um, greater spread of things like the flu, RSV, and other viruses. So get your flu shot. Um, it's safe. It's effective. Um, it saves millions of lives every year. So, um, And the other question you might be asking yourself is, um, my kids are back in school, what are the things that I should or should not be doing every day? Um, and we all need to uh, function, we all need to go to the grocery store and do those things. And uh, at this point, um, I would say, you know, do what makes your household function and what you need to do to get through um, life every day. But again, key messages, try to do it in the safest way possible, get vaccinated, wear your mask uh, when you're in, a, in an indoor setting and uh, wash your hands and, and distance when you can. Um, and we're always here to answer additional questions, reach out to your MAPMG physicians um, when things come up and we'll keep you updated as things evolve with uh, third doses and boosters.